Where? Oh. I gotta hide. Oh. Not on my watch. Oh shit! <laughs> oh my dead. god! Oh no! No 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 no! Silly. What the hell? Oh my god! Mostyn Gatehouse 1892, in a dream. Nightingale is sent to Mostyn Private Asylum by her father. New patients must spend their first night in the gatehouse for observation. It is there that Nightingale first awakens in the dream. So yeah, as you can see, it's got some weird ass graphics, almost uh, porn game quality. <laughs> It's got that uncanny realism. It's weird. Strange coin. A curious coin with a cross. It's not clear what metal it's made of. It has a subtle iron scent. Who needs money in a dream? As the weeks dragged on and my own motivation to help the guests act out their fantasies waned, I began to understand. A coin is a favor, stored for later. I guess we'll store that for later. Alright. I do have to close doors because enemies can apparently um, follow you through doors. A corpse in a cage, it's blocking a hole in the wall. Oh. Now we'll just hide under this table. And their vision ain't so great, so uh, yeah, he can't see us while we're here. It kind of looks like a uh, monitor with a turkey on his head. Or what on her head. And then once he's by, you can crouch walk. Yeah, there you go. This is all what I did in the demo. Alright, we are safe. And we can go here. Special placement log. Millie Ermwood, not us. Emma Benyon, not us. Becca Mason, not us. Nightingale Williams, that's us. Age 15, symptoms are pending. Alright, 15. There better not be some inappropriateness going on here. Oh, I can peek the door. Okay. A grandfather clock. There's a keyhole in the front, but we don't have a key. Picture of a brain, picture of some foppish prince. Let's just go right in. We don't need to peek it. Now, I am pretty sure. Right, there is a dude here. So there many he is. is. And you see, there's a key stuck to his back, and that's kind of what we're after. Pizza? Stole the key. The key to the front door of the mansion's gatehouse. Daffid. Have you misplaced the key again? I should hammer it to your backside, you absolute, absolute pillock. I did this in the demo. So we'll hide here so we can read that note. Gatehouse key. Father, Daffod's mind is literally decaying, but he can still be of use. To keep him from wandering the grounds, I've locked the gatehouse door. I nailed the spare key into his back in case you need it. You have to be sneaky. As an additional safeguard, I've cast a spell in the front garden of the manor. No undead may pass through. May pass through. If you're out there, check for the glowing white sigil above the doorway to ensure it's still working. Your ever busy daughter, Margaret. And yeah, if that's too hard to write, uh, read, you can hit the typeface. But, you know, you lose that character. Anyways, we're done here. Let's just sneak to make sure he doesn't hear us. So we, oops. Now he can unlock the door. Then we'll go through. Then we'll close the door. A white sigil above the doorway indicates enemies cannot pass through. Alright. Let's go check out over here. Here's the gate. Let's escape. Aww. I guess that would have been too easy. Uh, either way, this is a safe space, so we can run. I just <laughs> and this is about as far as I got. And I'm like, yeah, you know what? Let's just buy the game. I do have frame rate issues in here. I don't know why. Yeah, right here, for some reason. Slightly stale chocolate cake, still delicious. All right. You look lost. First time in the dream. I'm Becca. I'm afraid you've stumbled into something you probably shouldn't have. We're having a sort of celebration to welcome a new member of our little club. 
You see, we're witches. In the dreary waking world, there's no magic, but here, magic is real. I'm sure it's all terribly confusing. You need to go talk to the first witch. She's our leader. You'll find her up ahead by the fireplace. Just answer any questions she has truthfully, and I'm sure everything will be fine. Oh, and feel the gr free to grab a slice of cake. It's delicious. All right. Definitely not a sex cult. Oh, there's a dude under the table. I didn't see that. All right, and then after passing here, my frame rate improves. I don't know what that is. Um, you are not supposed to be here. Are you a patient here at the Mostyn Private Asylum? Yes. Hmm. Did you come from the gatehouse? Yes. Hmm. You made it all the way here with no assistance? Now, when I played the demo, I said yes, and she called me a liar and stabbed me or something like that. So this answer, no. Because I guess we had tutorial messages. No, she calls you a liar no matter what. <gasps> oh, right. And she set you on fire. She didn't stab you. <laughs> Welcome to the Withering Rooms. Chapter 1. Austin House 1892 in a dream. The pain of the flame subsides as Nightingale loses conscious consciousness. She awakens in a strange bedroom with, within Austin House, still in a dream. All right. And here is exactly where I stopped. I thought I stopped earlier, but no, this is where I stopped. It's just the last save was getting into that room. So now we're in a strange bedroom that looks a lot like the other bedroom. There's a keyhole in the front. I wonder if that's fast travel. Can I hide here? I guess you can hide in there. That's pretty cool. Okay, so the sigil's above the door there, so we're safe in here, I guess? Or it's just they can't pass through? Can't do anything with that mannequin. We have another mirror. Wait, we're stuck here? Does that mean so? Oh, search. An old kitchen cleaver generally used for hacking through thick cuts of meat. Normal phys for physical damage, heavy. You can do normal and heavy? Strike the mannequin. Oh, okay. And then you hold it for a heavy. Dodge. Okay. Nice. Oh shit. What's that? Nope. Nope. <laughs> okay. <laughs> what are you doing? I'm terribly sorry if I frighten you by just appearing like that. I like to observe new arrivals to ensure they're not violently deranged before permitting them out of their room. I'm Margaret Blackett, and I share administration of this asylum with my father, Dr. Robert Blackett. Your name is Nightingale, isn't it? Let me first deeply apologize to you for being set alight as soon as you arrived here. I assure you the responsible party has been severely reprimanded. I'm not familiar with your case history, but you may be wondering if this is all a delusion. I can assure you it's, it is not. You've been drawn into a phenomenon unique to Moston House. It's a sort of dream or nightmare. Weeks will pass here during a single night in the real world. I'm sure you have questions. I'll answer that as best I'm able. What can I tell you about? Let's, uh, can we get out of here? The methodology for waking up from the dream is not well understood. Some awaken with ease with only a vague memory of what occurred here. Others are trapped indefinitely, their comatose bodies slowly decaying in the real world. And it's no coincidence that we're kind of dressed like Alice from Alice in Wonderland. Dying in the dream provides no release. You'll simply awake anew. Okay, so I guess we can't really die then. As those trapped in the dream decay in the real world, they turn into deranged living corpses here. Unfortunately, the dream accumulates much more such unpleasant inhabitants each year. As such, it's critical that you avoid attention until you are properly equipped with tools to defend yourself. While dying in the dream is t a temporary affair, the experience is still dreadful, so you must be careful. Alright, tell me about magic. In order to invisibly observe you earlier, I used a spirit twig. Simply by snapping the twig in my hand, I'm able to briefly move about as if I were a phantom. In the real world, magic is the provenance of charlatans. But remarkably in the dream, magic is real. I am a novice magic user. 
You want to seek out the filthy wretch to learn more. The filthy wretch? You can't ask about the filthy wretch? I'll let you explore then. The mansion reconfigures itself each night, but you should be able to locate me in the study with ease. I'll leave you with the key to this room and make my exit a different way. Oh, a nightingale. Don't be discouraged if you die. As you have already seen, it's only temporary. It sounds perverse, but death truly is the greatest teacher. See you around! <laughs> Alright. Find the filthy wretch in the occult library. The key can be found in one of the... Me and Margaret in the study. Okay. How do I... I've just said press tab. No. Yes. Okay, it's the book. Find the filthy wretch in the occult library. The key can be found in one of the bedrooms in a chest requiring a code. And then we can meet Margaret in the study. Okay. Oh my goodness. This is like full on RPG. Hello? Is anybody here? Oops. Well, there's a mini map. Oh, that's ugly. Okay. Wait, what does the armor thing mean? Oh, well, we'll, we'll just go see. I'm sure someone's here. Yeah, we're gonna search everything. We got wax colored with woad. A useful ingredient in the production of spells. Alright, you can read the flavor text on your own. There, I, I hear something. There's definitely something here. Banquet hall. Is that where we want to go? No. Well, Wall is you know, it's a dead end, so let's go in there. Let's close that. Let's see if there's anything interesting in here. You can hide in here? Oh, nice. Is somebody playing that? Or is that, or is that background music? No, someone's playing that. It's a ghost in the mirror. Oh. Is he coming after me or... Okay, he just... Oh, shit. I'm cursed. As your curse level increases... Oh, shit. Something's here. Ah. Oh damn. Oh that sucks. Oh that's kinda cool though. Do you see the, the the um the candles go out as he walks by? Alright, let's go check out the rest of the room. Oh damn. I wish I could peek. When's he gonna turn around? Does he walk the whole room or does he? We got a scone. Oh, there's a door. Okay, I think he's gone. Damn it. Where'd he go, man? Oh shit! Sorry, those, those, uh... The keys are not quite working. What the hell? You found a healing item. Am I hurt? <clears throat> um, stats. One health now. We're not gonna waste our stone. <laughs> That's fine. Let's get out of here. Alright. What's this? Oh, there's a lady here. Oh, that's that's the lady. Okay, let's go talk to the lady. <laughs> Hello, lady. I don't need to heal, damn it. Okay, we're safe in here, right? We're safe in here. Reed Welsh Country Houses 1. Moston House, situated on a hill in Monmouth between St. Ellie's Church and Bryn Bach Abbey's ruins, has a fascinating and tragic history. Built by a coal magnet, Alfred, uh, Alfred Moston, in 1869, the house was initially designed as a country retreat before a series of terrible events it becoming the private residence of an American doctor, a cholera clinic, and finally a mental asylum. 
Did I read that? The house was initially dying at a country retreat before a series of terrible events. It becoming. Okay. So it is it's a little bit weird. There's a conspicuous chair here. What the hell is this? Oh, it's healing. I think. The little mark under my skull is gone. Uh, this, the, the meter. Can I get up? Hello? Okay, I just click. <clears throat> Nothing over here. Don't mind me, I'm just a lady with a cleaver. Oh, I guess I could have uh, tried to attack that ghost, but what have we got here? An unnerving yet harmless child's doll. Place to create a distraction or draw attention to something. Alright. A gnarled magical twig. Oh, there's the invisible twig. Snap it to become a spirit for five seconds. Spirits cannot be seen and are completely invulnerable. Fifteen curse. I still don't really understand what curse is. I got it, okay? Jeez, like, can you clear that? Do I have to eat it? Like, I have... According to this, where's my stats? I have one little hit point. Ponzer's Chess. Thank you for purchase for your purchase of Ponzer's Chess, a unique and exciting new take on the traditional game of chess. Before we explain how each unit operates, you'll need to understand some terminology. Perception. As perception increases, the unit can see spirits. Oh my goodness. Sorry, my phone. Perception. As perception increases, the unit can see spirits. The unit can see spirits from a further distance and detect increasingly sophisticated hexes and illusions. Poise. Units with higher poise are less likely to be stunned or knocked over by attacks. A little bit of Dark Souls there. Speed value of 115 indicates the unit performs all actions at 15% faster than normal. And luck, a value of 200 indicates double the likelihood of finding rare or expensive items as well as 10% more coins found. Okay. I guess that relates to our actual stats, right? So yeah, we got poise, speed luck. Okay, that's for us. I guess we're a poncer. <laughs> I don't know what that means. Is poncer a bad word? All right, let's talk to this lady. Margaret Blackett. I wasn't expecting to see you so soon. I believe you'll do well in the dream. Let me give you a little gift. This is an old ring of mine. If you die in the dream, you'll lose most of your items. But some blessed items, like this ring, will survive from night to night. To thrive here, you should get some magic lessons from my friend the Filthy Wretch. You'll find him in the occult library. It's likely he's locked the door to keep the undead out. Look for a chest with a numerical combination. You should find a combination nearby, perhaps encoded in a simple riddle. Something is decaying, something a decaying brain couldn't figure out. Who's your father? My father is Dr. Robert Blackett, famed American physician turned Welsh asylum owner. Have you heard of the composer Johann Sebastian Bach? He's my father's favorite. Bach was given a near impossible task by King Frederick of Prussia. Devise the accompaniment to a complicated melody on the spot. You see, King Frederick loved to humiliate visitors to his court in this way, by having them fail at something they were supposedly excellent at. Bach completed the task, much to the amazement of everyone in the room. When I first started learning how to play the piano at the age of eight, my father gave me the same challenge. In fact, he gave me that same challenge every day for four years. When finally I had learned enough counterpoint to complete the challenge, he congratulated me for taking four years to match what Bach had done in a single night. My father always aspired to match the achievements of his heroes. What a dick. He, he just never realized that his hero was really King Frederick, not Bach. Tell me about your mother. I never knew my mother. I was born in China. I knew she was Asian. I was like trying to avoid the Asian joke. <laughs> I was born in China in the wake of the Second Opium War. My father says she died in childbirth, but I'm not sure I believe him. I don't think it matters much. The only thing my mother gave me was this face, which was not always an asset growing up in England. Tell me about the future. My father wishes to pursue a full-time study of the dream. As such, I'll become the only administrator of the asylum. As for the dream, who can say? It has existed for at least 18 years. I suspect it will be with us forever. I only hope my father's research will find a way to banish these wretched living corpses. What about the dream? We already got that. Then nothing. Alright. 
I uh, don't know if I'm gonna do this on a second session or just continue off whatever uh, but I did notice that my audio was like really uh, not dialed in so hopefully I've got that dialed in now and I'll and it doesn't have the music completely overpowering everything but we'll see and if, uh, if it's still out there I'm gonna make some more adjustments so we need to find the filthy wretch so, key in one of the bedrooms, so we're gonna have to find a code. I don't remember what she said about the code. <laughs> but that's okay. We'll, we'll figure it out. Alright, let's close that. So, this door with the white thing on top is going to be where the lady is, so... Alright, we have a healing kit. Oh, two healing kits, nice. Ooh. Okay. There's pause menu. Yeah, let's put the assign shortcut R. Why not? And then I guess um we'll just put this here for now. Oh, they, you can get two of them. Okay, that's cool. Or three of them. How do you switch between them? Oh, okay. Okay, cool, 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 cool. Cool, 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 cool. Oh, you don't have to hold it either. That is a lot of butt. Okay. We are looking for Ooh, a chest. Let's go in there. Close the door, make sure no one can come in. I bet it's locked. It's locked. Oh, okay, so this is where this is the okay. <laughs> this is where the uh what, is, what? A key. Oh, that whole chest for just the key? Maybe that's not the, where the key is. What is that noise? I'm trying to read. Darkness fell upon Salerno before the horror began. The city had six administrators, eleven judges, and seven princes. Next, two princes shot themselves, then each prince slaughtered one judge. On the following day, two administrators burned themselves alive. In Salerno, but a handful of administrators, judges, and princes remained. Okay, damn it. Alright, so judges. We had 11 judges. Minus one is 10 judges. And then each prince. Oh man, okay. Let's work this out. Four, six, five. Let's try that. Shut up. No. Four. Can I just type? How do I. Oh. Four, six, five. Enter. Ooh, yeah. Key to the occult library. Peter has spent a fortune on these silly old books about how to summon demons to do one's bidding. Not sure what they're teaching him at Oxford, but I thought I was paying for a degree in classics, not 13th century magical nonsense written by some monk with an overactive imagination. Yeah, typically that is... <laughs> Criticism leveraged at the Bible. Empty jar can be filled with various liquids, sure. Ooh. A thoroughly, not just a, a moderately, but a thoroughly modern photographic plate with a camera can be used to create curiously vibrant photographs. She produces the most haunting photographs, claims they're real ghosts. Looks like somebody wearing a rag over the head to me, but I won't deny they are quite stirring. Alright, I guess we're going to look for a camera at some point. Nothing in there. Let's check out the other room. Something was... Oh. Oh shit. No, no, no. No, no, no. Okay. So that's what we were hearing. But he's not getting out of bed, so that's fine. Alfred Mostyn of Lancaster was born of modest means. He managed to build a coal mining empire after he was bequeathed a small plot in southeast Wales by his uncle. Like many of the newly rich, Alfred hoped for more, a more leisurely, aristocratic life for his children, so off went his twins Peter and Priscilla to England for a proper education. In 1869, Mostyn started construction on a country home halfway between the mine and Oxford, where Peter was pursuing a classics degree. Alright, let's just not wake this guy up. Perfect for crafting a spell. Alright, dude. You're not going to get out of bed, right? Okay. So let's just leave him alone. With his lymphoma or... or leukemia? 
<laughs> what is the one that I guess is just normal ass lung cancer? Oh, oh boy, that shouldn't have worked. So much fit. You're telling me? Did you see what I got to look at? Alrighty, the maid. All right, we got into the library. Let's close you. All right, we're safe in here. There's the sigil. We have a fountain. The night mother remembers. We are her bricks, and blood is her mortar. All righty. We have more books to read. Ponser's chest two. Unlike traditional chests where a piece is either alive or dead units, and Ponser's chest can suffer from a variety of temporary afflictions. We've got bleeding, fine poison. Yeah, we understand how that works. Paralysis, we know how that works. Curse rot. Inflicted when the unit reaches their cursed tolerance, the unit rots internally at a rate of one health point. Oh my god. Until a warding candle is used? Where do we find warding candles? At the warding candle store? Danger. The unit is near death and should heal immediately. Any magical healing effects cease to work. Okay. I guess that's the wretch. He's got some shit on his face. Let's check out the other side of the room first. To change the currently held item. What are you talking about? Tools? Okay. Oh. Okay, yeah, I guess you can only hold one thing. Okay, that's cool. That's cool. That's cool. Cool, 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 cool. What do we have here? A table for pressing wax. We have wax. Where is it? This. I guess I can't actually do anything with it until I learn more about this game. That's fine. Alright. Here I come with my cleaver. Oh, a new visitor to our dream. How exciting. I don't have a name exactly, but most folks call around here call me the filthy wretch. I consider myself a tutor of sorts in the occult arts. You seem like you would make a fine student. Before we get started, I have one small request, which you might find a bit off-putting. I'd like you to bring me a corrupted finger, freshly clipped from one of the undead. Now don't look so shocked, you don't even know what it's for. I'd suggest targeting one of the sleeping zombies. Fancy that, we just came from a room with a sleeping zombie. I appreciate this as an unusual and difficult request. But I assure you, at the end, I assure you the end result will be worth it. Have you found a corrupted finger yet? No. Well then, put that brilliant brain of yours into action. All right. We're going to go back to that room, but we have to make sure the maid isn't around. Maid? Maid? All right, buddy. It's time to die. Oh, shit. Come on. Oh. Alright. <laughs> that was really bad. Alright, let's just eat a scone. Alright, we got some scones. Search the body. We have wax colored with matter. Oh, we didn't get a finger. Oh, we did get a finger. A filthy, the filthy finger of a living corpse. She's calling her the first witch now. All right, Calera. Oh, he's got Calera. That makes no difference to me whatsoever. Covering them up with a sheet doesn't cover up the smell, unfortunately. All right, cool. We've got an info. Have you found a corrupted finger yet? Yes. Excellent. I won't ask where you got it. Now, what I'd like you to do is eat the finger. Just kidding, pupil. You son of a bitch. Such body parts are a valuable commodity with many uses in the dream, as in life. Really, as in life? I just happen to have a jar full of corrupted fingers. <laughs> you see the stone shrine in this room? A curious ancient thing. Place the finger into its basin to activate it. It will help you remember items you might otherwise have forgotten each night. You'll find shrines like these throughout the mansion. 
just as no two people are alike, so are the shrines. Each one will require a different offering to activate. Each new shrine you activate will allow you to remember one additional item. Return to me, pupil, once you have activated the shrine. Sure thing, buddy. This is the quest. Alright, how do I... Yes, I do. One item remembrance lot. Nice. Manage your remembered items. What can I remember? The dolls. Nah, let's remember this for now. Space. Okay. Cool. Very cool. Our next lesson will be the casting of spells. You may be skeptical about the existence of magic in the real world, but there is no doubting its power in the dream. Hold this blue scroll, focus your attention on the seal and imagine it breaking while you wave your hand over it. The seal will break and the magical energies contained within consume the scroll and escape. This blue scroll is a protection spell, giving you an invisible suit of armor that will absorb a few hits before dissipating. There is a price, however. Using magic will cause one to become slightly cursed. The effects are numerous, graying of the skin, an increased awareness of paranormal activity nearby. Next, strange and horrific sights previously hidden will reveal themselves. Everyone has a tolerance for being cursed, which, if exceeded, leads to a rather rapid internal rotting process. In that case, using a warding candle immediately to reduce use a warding candle immediately to reduce your cursedness. Enough prattle. Give that spell a try and then see when see me when you're ready to learn more. Sure. All right. Uh, spells. Spells? Okay, spells. Oops. Wait. What is this? Oh, it's Murder Murder. Okay. Envelops the castle. Okay. Cool. I call upon Sabnock. Bam. Nice. Good old Sabnock. Okay, so I'm gonna have to. To craft your own spells, you'll need a grimoire. It so happens I have an extra beginner's grimoire you may have. You can use that table over there to create your spells. Here's a blank scroll. You'll also need to find some wax. Come see me when you're done. Craft a spell using the wax table. Okay. Here we go. What do we got? We got... I don't have a holy candle. Do I have a holy candle? Oh, you have to make a holy candle. But you need yellow and a warning candle. Gradually heals curse damage. Okay, we can't make that. Hex upon a door. Anyone who opens it will be engulfed in a cloud of cursed energy. The effect lingers for several seconds. The hex is only visible to its creator and can be dispelled with a warning candle. Marbus. So, anyone opening the door? Does that include myself? I can make one of these, so let's make one of them. Let's make one. And then we'll make one of these. Alright, cool. Let's get out of here. And then we're probably going to want to put those on the list as well. Uh, no, man. Alright, let's... The warning spell. Okay. And then you got that. Okay. Hello. I've taught you everything I can for now. To continue your studies in the occult, you'll need to find the first witch in the basement. The one that set me on fire? Here is the east stairwell key. Before heading down, you might talk to Margaret Blackett. She mentioned needing something from down there. Oh, that actually scared me. I wasn't ready for that. Be warned that someone has tampered with the gas pipes in the basement. All the lights are out. And the basement is not somewhere you want to be without a light. <laughs> oh, he actually disappeared. There's a small passage under the curio cabinet. Crawl through. I'm pretty curious. Can I get back? Oh, shit. 
Is this guy gonna bust out? Tactics manual. Bait out attacks by dodging the last minute, second, blah blah. Then heavy attack. Use the yellow dummy spell. Okay. We've got none of the things here. We got a chest. What's inside? Permanent artifact. Describes a charm to recite whilst dodging. It momentarily transforms a caster into a spirit, rendering them impervious to all attacks. Adds a brief period of okay, cool. You now have an equipable item here. Okay, is it equipped? Oh, I haven't even been wearing this. Stupid. All right, Why? I'm not gonna hide in there. You cray cray. What's this? Moonless formless pads connect the past and the present. Light this candle to open a path. So long as you do not leave this room, death will return you to this moment. Huh? I'm not sure, whatever. Oh, that's f that is cool. Alright, let's read this thing. It is critical the initiate activate the shrine prior to beginning training, otherwise the night will be wasted. For successful training, the initiate should activate the mirror shrine, pull the chain to release the training assistant, engage in combat, die and repeat. Explain to the initiate that if they defeat the training assistant and would like to restart, they can take advantage of the Iron Maiden in this room. As initiates are now barred from using mirror shrines, this training is no longer to be used under any sort. Okay. Well shit, let's fight something. Oh, it's him. I don't want to. <laughs> I don't want to fight him. Oh crap! All right. Well, we've got our mirror shrine, so we're fine. Dodge and dodge. I dodged. Man, the controls are fucking crazy. Uh oh. Okay. Oh my god, okay. Oh boy. Oh my god. Yeah, the dodge is like very unresponsive. I don't like it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Let's try it. We gotta kill him. I'm just wasting all my shit on a training guy. Wow. Alright, we got him. But I wasted everything. Sulfuric acid. Highly corrosive but ineffective in its current form with pro with proper equipment could be turned into a throwable jar of acid. Enlarge heart of a living corpse. Alright. Ooh, a decorative shield. Purportedly Viking in origin can block most attacks, though will eventually break. Poise increases effectiveness. Cool. Control to block. Alright. Let's equip that. Oh, we have it. Oh my god, look at that. What does right click do? Oh, okay, right click helps you aim. Stay forward. Okay, maybe that was my problem. Oh shit. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Whoops. I'm gonna die. I don't have a warding candle, man. Alright, you know what? Let's let's get in the Iron Maiden. Let's get in the Iron Maiden! Ah. What does right click do? Oh, okay, right click helps you aim. Stay forward. Okay, maybe that was my problem. Oh shit. <laughs> oh my god. Whoops. I'm gonna die. I don't have a warning candle, man. Alright, you know what? Let's let's get in the Iron Maiden. Let's get in the Iron Maiden! <sighs> okay, we're fine. Oh no, I don't have the shield? I have to actually fight him again. Oh crap. Uh -huh. 
I, I can't. It's some. Ugh. This seems to be where. Oh. All right, that that was a good strategy. <laughs> All right, cool. All right, we're not gonna fucking dodge around again. Look at my curse. This is crazy. All right, cool. Wait, why did I ring the bell? What did that do? Okay, you know, let's just leave. All right. How do I... Okay, I can just save and exit here. So, I, you know what? I think that's enough for now. <laughs> because... Uh, oh, I'm, I'm fully healed now, but I'm super cursed. So, um, we'll call it here for now, and then we'll, we'll pick it up. Bye.